If you're anything like me, you are constantly trying to figure out what is the secret of successful people. When you meet them, you're like, what is the one thing? What is the thing you did that made this possible, right? Well, today I'm going to share with you five secrets from some really successful entrepreneurs. And when you think about it, it's so mind boggling. Here's the deal. I was listening because I wanted to figure out what is it that made them successful? What is it that helped them create these wins? And I didn't have to ask them. They were so generous. They just got to spit it all out before I got to ask. And I'm going to share those things with you. It was so wild because there were five people who shared their wins and they shared all of the same secrets. We had a running theme. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of a feel for how this played out. So the first in no particular order, and I'm not mentioning all of the wins, but I'll just tell you three of them. And so one of the doctors came on, and this is somebody who's been in private practice for seven years. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And she said, I just had my biggest revenue month since the beginning of my private practice. Okay. So which of course makes me go like, I want to know how that happened. So she said, you know, we've had our biggest revenue month since starting in our private practice, a private practice that's been around for seven years. And she said, and the interesting thing is I worked less, I saw less patients, I traveled a lot, and yet this happened, okay? And this is something that you want, I want, we want the time freedom, we want to be able to create results through our team and all of those things. So she said that, we celebrated, we went crazy, we're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Next doctor gets up again in no order, but another doctor. And this is a doctor, she's... I'm actually going to give her a big shout out. Her name is Dr. Kim Traquanda, and you want to go follow her. Okay. So she is someone who has taken on a global challenge. She's like, there's healthcare inequality. Her alliance is all about healthcare equity, right? And so there are countries where you have a ton of physicians and there are countries where there are really no physicians. And what she's trying to do is through technology and all of that telemedicine, we're able to set it up where people have access to US-based physicians in their countries providing all kinds of you know great services for a few hours a month right and she's like and we can have so many hours we can solve so many problems on a global scale i am so proud of her i'm so amazed at the size of her vision and she is pulling it off okay so she has a podcast check it out follow her on social media support her work okay and she's talking about you know she was at an event and all of that stuff and she ended up walking away with 60 to somewhere between 60 and 70 new physician volunteers, which for her model, you can appreciate how huge that is. You can appreciate like, oh my goodness, like think about it. If they were all to give her an extra hour a month, that is 70 additional hours for them to, you know, provide care across the world. Um, if they gave two hours, that'd be 140 hours. If they gave three hours, that would be, you see what I mean? Like it's, it's massive, right? And so we're cheering her on and all of that stuff. And she spilled the beans. This is how these things are happening in my business. Of course, she had other wins. And again, follow the theme. And another doctor comes on, and this was so great. She joined the EntreMD Business School in right after EntreMD Live, right? So literally, we're talking 90 days, okay? So she joined it during EntreMD Live of 2024. And she says, my husband told me to come share this win with you guys. And so she has a private practice. It's a direct specialty care practice. And she reported that her revenue had grown compared to the second quarter of the year in the third quarter of the year had grown by 122%, 122% in 90 days, okay? So wild. And she went on to talk about the things that she had done differently, how she had shown up differently and all of that. And again, it was a very interesting evening. It was one of those evenings where I was like, I don't know, even if I didn't teach, you guys have gotten so much out of this. Like we can literally just be done with a call right now, right? We didn't do that. We went on to do something very fascinating, but this was so, it, this was that amazing. As I listened to them, I was like, okay, like I see what the results you've created. And it's almost like this is an alternate reality, right? Because on the other side, you would hear things of, you know, I have to shut my, down my practice, it's not working and everything sucks and all that stuff. And I'm not saying like every single one of these people, they also have challenges, right? But they're winning, okay? So I figured... I will come share the theme with you so you can adopt this and start doing it in your own business starting today. Because these are things that have worked for me. These are things that have worked for so many students in the EntreMD Business School. These are things that can work for you, okay? So the first thing, and I found it very fascinating, 
that the first thing they all talked about was the shift in their mindsets, right? The shift in their mindsets that they had to do that created the change. And I do a lot of strategy. Um, I have a very solid work et ethic. So strategy, tactics, all of these things, I got that. And so in the early phases as an entrepreneur, I actually used to see mindset work as something that was for people who were soft or people who didn't know what they were doing or, you know, like people who were just too emotional. But then I came to realize that your mindset is is really like if you think about a Ferrari, right? You think about a 2025 Ferrari that can go zero to 60 in three seconds or whatever, right? That's amazing. But if the tires are flat, it doesn't matter how many horsepower it has. It doesn't matter at what speed it can go to zero to 60. It, none of that matters because the flat tires are going to ground the car. And in the same way, um, an undisciplined mind, a mindset that is not optimized is like flat tires, like you're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how great the strategy is, you're not going anywhere. And I found like, even though I can give people all the frameworks, I can give you the blueprint, the algorithms, I can show you what to do, I can map it out, I can create your calendar, I can show you all the things. If we don't get that mindset stuff right, it's not going to work. And so in the Entrepreneur in Business School, we do quite a bit of work on the mindset because it's going to show up. When you have to hire a kind of role you've never hired, it will show up. When you set a goal to hit a revenue goal you've never done, it will it up. When you decide to upgrade the kind of clients or patients that you work with, the mindset drama will show up again. If you raise your prices, the mindset drama will show up again. It's there. And the more work you do on your mind, the more you're able to adapt, evolve, and then just become the person who does that, right? It's the same thing when challenges show up. When challenges just show up, your mindset will be the difference between sulking for five minutes and getting together and rolling with the punches versus being out of it for two or three months or a year or forever, right? And so they all talked about the mindset work. And we have a framework that we use in the Entrepreneur Business School. We call it RBI, it's Reinvention by Imagination. And they all talked about how they leveraged that framework and how that framework was dramatically changing the way they thought. So it helped them show up better. It helped them ask bigger. It helped them lead better and all of that. It was amazing. But every single one of them talked about the mindset, okay? So that was the first thing. And now the second thing they talked about Again, it's something we talk about the school in the school a lot, and that is putting in the reps. Now, putting in the reps, putting in doing the repetition, right? Reps, putting in the reps of the right work, right? And so, for instance, for somebody who is going to build, let's say you're a coach and you're going to build this dominant visible brand, then one of the things you are going to do is you're going to show up on people's platforms, whether that is being a guest podcast podcaster, speaking on somebody else's stage, talking to referral sources, all that. Like that's just something you're going to do and you're going to put in the reps. You're going to do it over and over and over and over and over again. And in the beginning, it will look like it's not working as well. But if you'll be consistent, you'll find out that it was always working. If you're somebody in private practice and you want to build this practice that is, you know, you have a full panel and if you bring on new docs, you're able to fill their panel, all of this stuff. One of the things you're going to have to work on is your referral base, right? The people who send you patients and all of that. And people tell me, oh, well, the front desk person didn't let me get through, blah, 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 blah. But this is the thing, you're going to go at it and add it and add it and add it until you get the number of referral sources you need to make the practice what you need it to be, right? Or your panel, what you need, you need, you need it to be. And on and on, there's so many things things that ordinarily maybe you run away from. These are high level tasks and you're going to put in the reps and it's going to look like it's not working at times, but it's always working. And then challenges are going to show up, but you're going to keep putting in the reps and you're going to keep putting in the reps. They all reference the reps. They all reference the reps. They all talked about doing the work. Like the school is great. You will get the guidance. You will get the community. But at the end of the day, you got to do the work and you got to keep doing the work. And you got to put your head down and do the work, right? And so first, we're going to work the mindset. Second, oh my goodness, we're going to do the reps, right? Okay. So as you can see, these are things that you can do. The third thing that was a, a theme and one of the doctors said is you got to do the work and Sometimes it's boring work. I was, I could have hugged her. I could have, I could have flown through Zoom to get into her house and hug her because 
there is this illusion or delusion or, you know, that, that is on social media that being an entrepreneur is so exciting and you're just excited all the time and you're doing innovative things and creative things all the time, which is true. Like, I love being an entrepreneur and I love that I can innovate within my business and I love I can be so creative what I with what I do. I mean, I am a creative, you know, I, I'm prolific on social media. I have podcasts, plural. I have YouTube channels, plural. I mean, the EntreMD Business School started one way four years ago and I've innovated and innovated and innovated is a very different product that we have now which is so much better it helps people get results bigger faster and all of that stuff however there's a lot of stuff that's boring there's a lot of stuff that even in the creative process if you are going to stay true to your message for instance you're going to say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again you may use a different story you may do it use a different tagline you may use a different title but you're going to say the same thing over and over and over if you're going to train a team you're going to train them over and over and over if you're going to lead vision casting meetings you are going to share your vision with your team with your community with your audience over and over and over and over if you're putting in the reps you're going to put in the reps and sometimes the same rep over and over. So it does get boring and boring is okay. And you have to be okay doing the boring work. You have to get away from this, you know, like how sensational social media makes it seem. It is, but it's not that way all the time. Like there's times that it's just flat out boring and boring is okay. And you do it, right? And you don't stop because it's boring and look for a shiny thing because guess what? You say yes to the shiny thing, give it another 30 days, and guess what's going to happen? It's going to be boring, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's the third thing, doing the boring work, doing the boring work. And they said it over and over, like this was a theme that I noticed, okay? So that's the third thing. The fourth thing, which was a really powerful thing, is, you know, one of the docs said, and which was true in the case of all, all of these doctors who share their stories, is don't be thrown off by the obstacles. Pivot and keep moving. Okay, so sometimes when obstacles show up in our businesses, we think that we did something wrong or we're not good entrepreneurs or the things that we don't know and all of that. And the truth of the matter is that's not the case at all. There will always be obstacles, right? There will always be obstacles that will show up in your business. That's just the nature of the world. That's like saying there's gravity in the world. There is gravity, right? There's no way to avoid them. So the thing is, how do I choose to respond to them? Am I going to fall apart? Am I going to see this as an opportunity to get better? Am I going to sit and whine and complain and wish that the obstacle wasn't there? Or am I going to respond to it and still be committed to my vision and my goals and figure out how to make it happen, right? Like, what am I going to do, okay? So not falling apart in the face of obstacles is a huge, huge, huge thing because there will always be obstacles. And think about it. Um, for instance, I started my private practice in 2008. And in 2008, we all know that was the year, like almost the beginning of a recession, right? I started it there. So you started private practice, there's obstacle right there. What are you going to do, right? In 2020, there was the pandemic, a whole big obstacle. What are you going to do? With the pandemic came the great resignation. And in a place where it was stable, you had a stable team and all of that, people started dropping like flies. What, what are you going to do, right? Like at every point in time, these obstacles show up. And you're going to have to pivot and you're going to have to keep going if you want to be this person who will go on to accomplish your vision, accomplish your goals and all of that stuff. Sometimes the obstacles are not things as dramatic as that. Sometimes it's life happening. Sometimes it's something great. You got pregnant, you have a baby, like, which is amazing, but it creates obstacles in your business, right? Because now you have less time. Now you're probably more tired and all of those kind of things, right? Sometimes it's not even any of that. Sometimes it's just something you're not good at yet, right? There was a time when I was hiring and I was hiring people that were not, not a good fit for my company. And so, of course, it, that created a lot of problems. They were not happy. I was not happy. Eventually, we had to dehire or they quit or whatever. And that's all, ugh, right? But again, you pivot and you keep moving. You learn what you need to learn and keep moving. You ask yourself, how is this obstacle making me better? And you choose to become better. You choose to become stronger. You choose to learn a new way of doing things, right? And so... Not falling apart in the face of obstacles was something that was a common theme amongst them. Now, to be clear, this doesn't mean be strong at all times. Don't have emotions. Don't have any feelings. Just shut down obstacles and all of that. It doesn't necessarily mean that because we're all human. 
But what it does mean is, you know, I teach about this when I host the 90 day sprint masterclasses, like workshops to help people plan for the next 90 days in their business. I'm like, anticipate that there will be challenges and decide in advance, how am I going to respond to them? Right. So for instance, for the people in the EntreMD Business School, I'm like, you have a community of people who understand, they understand so intimately what you're going through because they're going through it as well. There's somebody you're looking at who is super strong now, but, you know, two months ago, they were in a valley. So, for instance, there's a tier of the EntreMD Business School that's called EBS Scale. And these are for doctors who are doing over a million in revenue who are still after hyper growth. They want to build a team that can run the company without them and things like that. And so just recently, we had a doc who was having a lot of challenges, you know, like with with team, with processes, with the pain that comes with growth, right? When you grow, you break your systems and you have to rebuild them and all of that. And it was a little hard. It was a little challenging for her, right? And it was very lovely that there was somebody else in scale who had that same experience like two or three months ago. And she raised her hand and she's like, listen, doc, this was me, right? You saw me go through it. You saw me <laughs> go through it. And on that day, her win was, oh my goodness, life is good. My team is good. My company is great. I can't even describe it, but business is good, right? And so to see somebody who was where this doctor was having a challenge, to see somebody that you know was where she was, and to see that that person is on the other side, helps you go through your challenge, knowing that these two shall pass, right? And so leaning in on your community is a decision you can make ahead of time. Like when this happens, I'm going to lean and say, this is what is going on, right? Like, how would you handle it? And sometimes you just need someone to hear you out. Like, you know what to do. You just need support to go through it, right? Like you're going to lean on your community. You're going to ask questions. You're going to get the help that you need. You're not going to roll over and play dead, right? And all of that stuff. So I have people anticipate, like, yes, there's going to be challenges and this is how I'm going to respond. So that was the fourth thing. And the fifth thing they all said, right? The fifth thing they all said is, I am so grateful for EBS. I am so grateful for this community, right? And that is because that is a place where they learn the mindset stuff. That is a place where they learn the strategies. That is the place where boring work, putting in the reps has been normalized, right? That is a place where people understand if I do this long enough, I can get there. So for instance, today, somebody posted in the Facebook group for the EntreMD Business School, she was posting on somebody's comments where the person shared their wins for the third quarter of the year. And it was it was big. Like this is somebody who is running a very successful multi-million dollar practice. And she's like, we had our highest revenue quarter and all this stuff. And she, she's saying all these things, which I'm so grateful that people are vulnerable enough to share, Right. And then this person says, you are such an inspiration for me because I go back and I watch the videos from years ago when you joined the school and I cannot believe you went from that to become this person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it is such a gift to be able to look at somebody who is like unicorn level rock star and you get behind the scenes access to watch their journey. You know what I mean? It's such a beautiful thing, you know? And so they all talked about that. They all talked about the community, the doctors who are there to support them, the strategies they get, the mindset shifts they get, the fact that they're in a community of people who are vision boards for them, right? And all of that. And it's just huge because, you know, I, I talk about this a lot that at the end of the day, you cannot escape the impact of your environment. You're going to look like your community. You're going to look at like the people you spend time with. And they all, they all alluded to that. Like, I'm in the right community. I'm in the right community. One of the doctors said, we are the ones getting it done. We are the ones showing that it's possible. There is not a better place to be, right? And so for me, it was, I, I usually leave the Wednesday calls like, it's, it's such a highlight of my week. I'm so excited because I get to see doctors who are crushing it and they are building their dream businesses and they're building their dream lives. 
and they have a container where they can have the full experience of entrepreneurship. There are high highs, there are low lows, but they're in a place that does not let them quit when the low lows come. And they're in a place where they can continually believe in the high highs because they see other people doing it, right? And it's just such a, it's such a beautiful place to be in, right? And so for some of you listening, like, you know, you've been, <laughs> you've been on the fence thinking about the EntreMD Business School this whole time. And you're like one day and all of that. And I want to invite you to maybe make today one day, you know, because it is a real place where real doctors are making real change. And it's huge. It's amazing. And you may go like, but I have questions. I'm not sure. And all of that. Just book a call. Just book a call with the team. EntreMD.com forward slash call. And they will walk you through it. And you may be here and you're like, no, that's not really what I want to do. And this episode is still for you. I want you to still make that commitment, right? Make the commitment. I'm going to do the mindset work. We do a lot of episodes on here about the mindset that is required for, for you to win as an entrepreneur. Put in the reps. You know the things to do to make your business grow. We've done a lot on this. We've done a lot through our books. You know, there's the visibility formula. The, there's a profitable private practice playlist. There's the EntreMD Method book. Just learn the reps. Put in the reps. Do the boring work. Don't quit in the face of challenges. And build your own community. Build an inner circle of people who are winning. Build an inner circle and you know, leverage that because it makes a huge difference and it is a big factor in whether you're going to thrive or not as an entrepreneur. Okay. Now, there's nothing I've said today that is earth shattering. I just want you to see the connection between these five simple things and the kind of wins these doctors reported. Highest revenue they've had ever, 122% growth quarter over quarter, 60 to seven volunteers in one business, physician volunteers, which is so huge. And I could go on and on and on and on and on. And on. It works. Okay, I know we've been sold a lie as physician entrepreneurs that we can't really build very successful businesses. You can't build your dream life and your dream business. I am telling you that you can, and so many people are. You can do it too. And if you don't say yes to your dream and commit to your dream, if you don't say yes to your vision, to your goal and commit to it, nobody's going to say yes for you. Like nothing happens until you're committed. And so I want you to say yes to your vision. I want you to say yes to your goal. I want you to commit to these five activities, right? Because they will make all the difference for you. Okay. The next 90 days, what could your business look like? What could your life look like? Think about, think about 122% growth in 90 days. This is insane. What could it be for you? If you said yes, and you committed to it, right? What could that be? So I am looking forward to hearing you reach out to me after nine days and saying, Dr. Una, you will not believe what happened. <laughs> And I promise you I will, okay? I promise you I will. I cannot wait to hear your story, but do it. And if you're here, you know that you know that you know that you're, you're supposed to be in the entrepreneurship business school. It's been calling your name. You've been wanting to do it. I want to invite you to say yes today, okay? And yes is not very complicated. Yes means book a call. Okay, book a call, talk with my team, get your questions answered, and we'd love to welcome you so you can join the community, okay? I am rooting for every single one of you. I am excited for physicians everywhere. I know it's a challenging time in healthcare, but this is our time. This obstacle, quote unquote, in healthcare, like, yes, it's awful, but it is really designed to make us stronger. It's designed to make us evolve. It is designed to make us, you know, go back and be the commanders of our future and write it the way we want to write it and live the way we want to live and practice medicine in the way we want to practice. So I want you to see it as a gift as opposed to a problem. I want you to leverage these five things and I cannot wait to celebrate you. Okay, so I'm rooting for you always and I'll see you, my friend, on the next episode of the Entremity Podcast.